Simulation is the most popular quantitative method in business, second only to statistics. You may have heard of different kinds of simulations. There are simulations that are used for training, like flight simulators for training pilots, uh, business simulation games you might have played in your classes, like for instance in Business 150 you might have uh, played a simulation game called Biz Cafe, where teams of students pretend they're running a coffee shop and uh, they would make weekly decisions. We use simulations in making real business decisions too. We are going to concentrate on a simulation called Monte Carlo Simulation. Monte Carlo Simulation is used to make decisions in situations where there is a lot of uncertainty. You might recall in project scheduling, when you don't know how long each activity will take, you come up with three possible times for each activity. The shortest possible time, the longest possible time, and the most likely time. From this, and assuming each activity time has beta distribution, we could estimate the probability of finishing by a certain deadline. We do something similar in Monte Carlo simulation. For example, you want to calculate the profit you could make from a new product, but you don't have all the data you need, like, you know, like the customer demand for your product. So what we do is assume certain distribution for the customer demand, then we could find the probability that the profit would be at least a certain level. The Protocom example uh, here uh, deals with risk analysis. This company, Protocom, has come up with a prototype for a new portable printer. In order to decide whether to manufacture and market this new printer, they would like to make sure there is a good chance that it will be profitable. Specifically, they would like to estimate the profit for the first year. This is a problem involving risk analysis because when we launch a new product, there is always a risk that we lose money on it. We would like to calculate the profit for the first year. We are given some data uh, here. The selling price will be $249 per unit. The administrative cost will be $400,000 and the advertising cost will be $600,000. All these are the figures for the first year. There are also some missing data. For instance, normally we don't know how many printers we'll be able to sell. And also we're told that the variable costs like labor costs per unit and the parts cost per unit are not known. The point of the simulation is being able to estimate the profit you know, in a situation where you don't have all the data. When you don't know the one right answer, what you do is come up with three possible answers, like in the project scheduling with three time estimates for each activity. If you come up with a single value forecast, your number will probably be wrong. But if you come up with a range of possible values, there's a good chance the right answer is somewhere in that range. So here we have for each unknown variable over here, uh, three values, the minimum value, the maximum possible value, and the most likely value. Using these, we could do some preliminary analysis. We will calculate the profit in three different scenarios. The base case scenario, that's the middle scenario, uh, and the worst possible case, and the best possible case. To do that, we need to think about how to calculate the profit. Hmm, how do you calculate the profit? Well, you take the revenue and subtract the cost. Now, how do you get the revenue? Hmm. You multiply the unit price by the number of units that you sell. Now, what about the cost? Well, let's see. The cost should be the sum of the fixed cost and the variable cost. Okay, now the unit price is $249 per unit. So, <laughs> that's 249 And the number of units is, let's see, right here. First year demand represented by the variable x. So this part is x. That's 249 times x. Now the fixed cost is a combination of the administrative cost and the advertising cost. So these two guys, so 400,000 plus 600,000. 
So that would be 1 million. The variable cost here would be the unit variable cost times the uh, times x. So it's variable cost per unit times uh, the first year demand. Well, what is a unit variable cost here? There are two kinds of unit variable cost, uh, direct labor cost and the parts cost. They are represented by, right here, they are represented by C1 and C2 respectively. So we add them to get the unit variable cost. So this part is C1 plus uh, C2. So here's our profit for the first year. Let's call it P. So revenue is 249 times X. And we subtract the cost. Uh, the cost over here is 1 million uh, plus the variable cost times uh, X. So 1 million plus variable cost, which is C1 plus C2. And multiply that by X, then close the brackets. So revenue minus uh, the cost. Okay, now we're going to combine the terms that contain the X variable and rewrite the expression. So here we have 249 times X, so there's one. And then there's C1 plus C2 times X. Uh, so in front of X, the coefficients are going to be 249. And then minus C1 minus C2. And then all that times X. And what's left over is only minus 1 million. So that is our... Uh, profit function for the first year. You can see inside the parentheses here uh, is the you know, unit contribution margin. Now that we have the profit formula, we could plug in numbers to come up with different profits in uh, various scenarios. Uh, first, we're going to calculate the base case profit. Base case is the average case. In the base case, we use the most likely values uh, of our variables or the expected values when they're available. So here is our profit function, and we're going to plug in values for these three variables. Well, so we would want to plug in the most likely values, that is, these values uh, for the base case. So here is a profit is equal to 249 minus C1 is 45, C1 is, uh, C2 is 90, and then multiply that by most likely demand of 15,000 and, and minus 1 million. So inside the parentheses, uh, it's going to be 114. So that's over here. And then you multiply that by 15,000. And minus 1 million uh, gives us $710,000. So that's the kind of the average scenario. Now let's look at the worst case scenario. In the worst case, we will plug in the worst possible values for the three variables. So uh, the worst case is when the costs are at their, what, highest or the lowest? Right, the highest. And when the demand is at its lowest value, so it should be maximum for the cost, so that is these values. Let's make it a different color. Uh, and the minimum demand, that's 1,500. So that's how we're going to plug in. So, let's go to 249 minus 47 minus 100 uh, times 1500 minus 1 million and again 
in the parentheses here, uh, you get 102, and then times 1,500 minus 1 million. Uh, that gives us a negative value. So there's a loss instead of profit. $847,000 of loss. Now let's look at the best case. In the best case, uh, the cost will be at their lowest possible value, so that's minimum minimum for the cost. How about a purple? Uh, and the first year demand, demand will be at the highest possible value, so that will be 28,500. So P is equal to 249 minus 43 minus 80 times 28,500 minus 1 million. Okay, in the parentheses we have 126, and then multiply it by 28,500 minus 1 million uh, gives us 2,591,000. What is the result we have? We could say this, that our profit is most likely to be somewhere around 710,000, but it could be anywhere between negative 847,000 and 2,591,000. Now that is a wide range. I don't think you get a promotion out of something vague like that with such a, a wide range of values. That's just not enough information to make a decision on whether to invest in this product. We would want to know not just the profits in the most extreme scenarios and the most likely profit, uh, but we want to know the probabilities associated with different profit levels. So that is what we could do with a simulation. In simulation, we calculate profits for a lot of different scenarios, not just three. We generate specific values for the three variables and then calculate the profit. And then we generate another set of values for the three variables and then calculate the next profit and so forth. To generate the values for those three unknown variables, what we do is assume certain probability distribution for each variable. So each variable is treated as a random variable with a specific distribution associated with it. And in this example, we are given the distributions to use. Uh, first, we're given that the direct labor cost follows a discrete distribution uh, like this. Discrete distribution means it's possible to make a list of the possible values. So we're given that the labor cost could be, uh, it'll be between 43 and 47, and here are the possible values, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, five possible values, uh, and uh, each possible value has a probability associated with it. So the word discrete here means you know, separate, no, not continuous. So uh, the possible values are just separate values. Uh, they are not an interval of decimal numbers. Uh, second, uh, we are given that the parts cost follows a uniform distribution between 80 and 100. So it's, it would be the, the value should be somewhere between 80 and 100, and the probabilities are the same everywhere in that interval. The third variable, the first year demand has a normal distribution with a mean of 15,000 and a standard deviation of 4,500. So you could see that each tick mark is for one standard deviation of you know, 4,500. In simulation, you could think of the model as a box. So here is your model. Okay and you have the inputs going in and outputs going out. Uh, and the output here, uh, here, for instance, will be like the profit we're calculating. And the inputs are the parameters like you know, fixed costs, variable costs, and uh, selling prices, and so forth. Uh, now, some of the numbers are known, like you know, selling price is $249, and the fixed cost, so that's the price, uh, and the fixed cost is uh, $1 million. Uh, but uh, we have these three other variables that are not known, uh, like the uh, labor cost has discrete distribution, you know, kind of like this, <laughs> a C1, and the parts cost has a uniform distribution, uh, like this, and uh, uh, first year demand 
x has a normal distribution like this. Uh, so, so instead of uh, inputting into the model like numbers, you know, certain numbers like this, we're putting in for these uh, variables, we're putting in the distributions, like distributions. Uh, so not a single value for each one, but distributions. So when we do run the simulation, uh, what we get for the profit is also uh, some kind of uh, distribution. You know, imagine you know, something like this. So you get the profit distribution rather than one single you know, profit value. But once you have the distribution of the profit, from this we could calculate all kinds of probabilities for different levels of profit. How we generate the profit distribution is we calculate profits for a lot of different scenarios by generating uh, for each trial a number uh, for each random variable. So, you know, pick one of these numbers and then pick a number from here. Uh, then pick a number from uh, from the uh, you know somewhere over here, and then stick those in to the profit function and calculate the profit. And then you you just keep repeating the process. For each trial, we pick three numbers from these three distributions and plug them in into the profit formula to calculate the profit. So we we'll have generated in that way lots and lots of profit values uh, that we could build the distribution with.